Hello, I'm Edward Tart, math teacher. This is another in a series of solution videos to some of my math challenges. The math challenge for this solution video is the spider and fly challenge. Here is how I presented that challenge in the original video. A spider lived in a rectangular room 25 feet long by 10 feet wide by 10 feet high. One day the spider saw on one of the walls a fly and the spider wanted to get to the fly and eat it. At the time the spider was on one of the 10 by 10 walls midway between the two side walls and 10 inches below the ceiling. The fly was on the opposite wall also midway between the two side walls, 10 inches above the floor. The fly was apparently asleep, unaware of the danger. The spider cleverly calculated the shortest route by walls and or ceiling and or floor to reach the fly. The spider quickly followed that route and got to where the fly was and ate it. My questions are, describe that route and tell me exactly how long it was. That is, how far did the spider crawl along walls and or ceiling and or floor in order to reach the fly. Here is my solution. The key to this challenge is to imagine that the six surfaces of the room, each a rectangle, are hinged together and then laid out flat. After doing that and plotting the location of the spider and the location of the fly, a straight line segment from spider to fly will be a direct route and the problem is to discover the shortest direct route. The one that intuitively comes to mind is this one. C represents ceiling. Here's the location of the spider. Here's the location of the fly. The spider takes this route and the length of that route is 25 feet plus an additional 10 feet which makes 35 feet which is 420 inches. But that in fact is not the shortest route. Here is another possible configuration C represents ceiling, this SW, that means this is a side wall. And here's the spider's location, here is the fly's location. This path is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. The length of this leg of the right triangle is 170 inches. The length of this leg is 370 inches. We use the Pythagorean equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find the length of the hypotenuse and that length turns out to be a little more than 407 inches well that's shorter than this 420 inches yet even this is not the shortest possible route here is another configuration that's the ceiling that's a side wall. That's the floor. Here's the spider. Here's the fly. We have again a right triangle where the path from the spider to fly is the hypotenuse. The length of this leg is 240 inches. The length of this leg is 320 inches. Again, we can use the Pythagorean equation to find the hypotenuse. Or we can suspect that this is a 3-4-5 right triangle, and indeed it is. 
3 times 80 is 240, 4 times 80 is 320, 5 times 80 is the length of the hypotenuse, 5 times 80 is 400. Either by that method or by using the Pythagorean equation, we determine that the length of this path is exactly 400 inches which is 33 and one-third feet. That is 20 inches less than our first path. The, this being the path that, for me at least, intuitively would be the correct answer. And what I find particularly interesting and amazing about this solution is that this is in fact the shortest possible path, and it involves the spider crawling along five of the six rectangular surfaces of the room. His end wall, the ceiling, a side wall, the floor, and the fly's end wall. Five out of six. In my opinion, this is an amazing problem. And it is not original with me. I understand that this is a very famous problem. I found it in a book and changed the numbers that I found in the book. So that's my solution to the spider and fly challenge. Thank you for watching this solution video.